From our studios in New York, here again is Jane Pauley. So, we could be in for a bad hurricane season. At least there's time to make a plan if you live in a vulnerable coastal area. When one of these storms hits land, most everyone else hits the road. But you're about to meet a man who relishes rushing in where others fear to tread. He drives straight into danger with nothing more than his camera and raw nerve. Here's Mike Taibbi with the Hurricane Chaser. Raging winds, torrential rains, pounding surf, and a tidal surge that seems unstoppable. When nature unleashes the full fury of a hurricane, most people in their right minds would not want to get in the way. I like hearing the thunderclaps, the dark black clouds rolling in, the wind picking up, the trees starting to bend over. But Richard Herodner isn't like most people when it comes to hurricanes, and the video you're watching proves it. For the past three decades, this 53-year-old South Florida man has tried to meet every Atlantic hurricane up close and personal as it's made landfall. A lot of people enjoy a good storm, you know that, and I enjoy it to the utmost, I guess. What started as a hobby during his college years turned into a career for this amateur videographer. The first thing you see when a big hurricane is coming is this big covering cirrus shield that covers the whole storm like a giant canopy over a, an atom bomb. A former science teacher and accountant, he's one of a handful of daring souls who battles the elements and competes against the professional television crews to chase down the heart of a hurricane and capture its raw power on camera. Do you see it as a sport? It's a spectator sport, really. You're, you're rushing to get the best seat, I guess, in the stadium. That's the sport. Elena. Andrew. Hugo. Bonnie. They're just a few of the some 50 hurricanes who Rodner has banged heads with over the years. As a storm approaches land, it's going to hit a day or two from now. I will take off and get ahead of it to where I think the central possible point is. With only a car, a couple of cameras, a cell phone, and several days worth of food and gear, Herodner charts a course right for the eye of the storm, the goal of this dangerous game. But getting there can be tricky, often chaotic, as the hurricane nears land and makes unpredictable changes. This is the end of the road, boy. The core, that 5 to 15 mile core of maximum winds, only hits in one spot. And does it come inland like this? No, it comes inland like this. You gave me 33, 42, 36? Herodner keeps track of the storm's position, gathering information that will help lead him right through the most powerful part of it, the dreaded eye wall. But the payoff is getting the rarest of pictures, like the deceptive bowl of beautiful blue that can only be seen looking straight up inside the eye of the storm. You're looking right up through a donut hole, and it's definitive column of clouds 40 to 60,000 feet tall and you're surrounded by it. In 1985, this chaser got an eyeful, the eyes of four different hurricanes to be precise. The eye of the hurricane, Mexico Beach. So I could claim that's a world's record if there's such a thing for one person on the ground to see four eyes. Herodner sells his unique video and sometimes gives it away. He says civil defense departments, schools, even the National Hurricane Center all use it for training and education. If you can show them what's going to happen, and you show a tidal surge sweeping over people's homes and demolishing them, people will be more likely to say, well, I better not stay here to protect my house. Mm -hmm. I'll come back when it's over. Yet Richard Herodner is out there in the worst of it, by choice. So far, he's been lucky. He has minimized his risks, for the most part, Still, inevitably, he has had his share of close calls. Now in the ocean, Hurricane Elena, 1985. This was probably the most grueling hurricane chase I ever had, and maybe the most successful as far as a photographic venture. The quest took him on a treacherous drive over a crumbling causeway on a sea-battered edge of the Florida panhandle. After reaching his destination, a flooded barrier island, he quickly decided it was time to turn back. I was in the right lane, and at last second I saw 
the bridge was not there in front of me in my lens. And I turned my car to the left lane and drove in that half-gone bridge the rest of the way back to the mainland. When I looked back at that, I said, that was just pure luck that you did not drive over that bridge into the water. Or some would say pure stupidity, that you would even take a chance. I mean, you can see that the, the, the causeway base has been eaten out by the water already. Why go out there? I was obsessed to capture Parrier Island tidal surge on film and was willing to take certain chances. I'll never do that again. Nor does he want to again experience another phenomenon of hurricaneology, the occasional big one that slams home in the dark of night. I personally do not even enjoy a minor hurricane at night. In the daytime, I've got my scientific fascination, the visual stimulation, and being scared. At night, you just have being scared. And that's precisely why Hurricane Andrew, in 1992, was his worst experience of all. That storm chased the chaser right back to his home in South Florida. I ended up inside, under a fortified room, under a table, with three other people, listening to unbelievable crashes into the walls. So, for that hour, hour and a half, where you were cowering in the house... Cowering is correct. The big, brave hurricane chaser is just as scared as everybody else. I was scared out of my gourd. But it's all just part of the job he created for himself. A job that also requires that he wait patiently every summer until the Atlantic hurricane season begins to rumble. There's only an average number of nine storms a year. One and a half hit land. And if he has his way, Richard Harodner will be out there for every storm that hits, for the worst that nature dishes out, to get it on camera again and again and again. And as long as the hurricanes keep coming, you can keep track of them by logging on to our website. You'll also find out how to protect your property in case a storm does strike.